Hi, everybody. It is January 24, 2019. I'm going to be reading pretty much all of this open letter to legislators con currently considering vaccine legislation from Dr. Tatyana. And that is what she is known as, Dr. Tatyana. You can listen to this video. I will link to it below. She is a immunologist and she has very important things that she has written down here in her open letter in 2015. It's 2018. More and more children in between 2015 and 2018 have been killed or have had their health destroyed due to these vaccines. Please circulate this. Do unvaccinated children pose a higher threat to the public than the vaccinated? It is often stated that those who choose not to vaccinate their children for reasons of conscience endanger the rest of the public. And this is the rationale behind most of the legislation to end vaccine exemptions currently being considered by federal and state legislators countrywide. You should be aware that the nature of protection afforded by many modern vaccines, and that includes most of the vaccines recommended by the CDC for children, is not consistent with such a statement. I have outlined below the recommended vaccines that cannot prevent transmission of disease, either because they are not designed to prevent the transmission of infection rather they are intended to prevent disease symptoms or because they are for non-communicable diseases. People who have not received the vaccines mentioned below pose no higher threat to the general public than those who have, implying that discrimination against non-immunized children in a public school setting may not be warranted. The inactivated polio virus vaccine cannot prevent transmission of polio virus. Tetanus is not a contagious disease, but rather acquired from deep puncture wounds. Vaccinating for tetanus cannot alter the safety of public spaces. While intended to prevent the disease-causing effects of the diphtheria toxin, the diphtheria toxoid vaccine, also contained in the DTAP vaccine, is not designed to prevent colonization and transmission. Acellular pertosis replaced the whole cell pertosis vaccine in the late 1990s, which was followed by an unprecedented resurgence of whooping cough. An experiment with deliberate pertosis infection in primates revealed that the AP vaccine, a cellular vaccine, is not capable of preventing colonization and transmission of B pertosis. Furthermore, the 2013 meeting of the Board of Scientific Counselors at the CDC revealed additional alarming data that pertosis variants currently circulating in the USA acquired a selective advantage to infect those who are up to date with their DTaP boosters, meaning that people who are up to date are more likely to be infected and thus contagious than people who are not vaccinated. Among the numerous types of H influenza, the Hib vaccine, HIB vaccine, covers only type B. Despite its sole intention to reduce symptomatic and asymptomatic Hib carriage, the induction the introduction of the Hib vaccine has inadvertently shifted strain dominance towards other types of H influenza. These types have been causing invasive disease of high severity and increasing incidence in adults in the 
era of the Hib vaccination of children. The general population is more vulnerable to the invasive disease now that it has or was prior to the start of the Hib vaccination campaign. So, I'm sorry, I didn't read that very well. The general population is more vulnerable to the invasive disease now than it was prior to the Hib vaccination campaign. Discriminating against children who are not vaccinated for Hib does not make any significant uh, scientific, wow, scientific sense in the era of non-type BH influenza disease. Hepatitis B is a blood-borne virus. It does not spread in a community setting, especially among children who are unlikely to engage in high-risk behaviors such as needle sharing or sex. Vaccinating children for hepatitis B cannot significantly alter the safety of public spaces. Further, school admission is not prohibited for children who are chronic hepatitis B carriers. To prohibit school admission for those who are simply unvaccinated and do not even carry hepatitis B would constitute unreasonable and illogical discrimination. So they they allow hepatitis B carriers to attend school, but they don't allow unvaccinated non-hepatitis B carriers to attend school. Doesn't make any sense. In summary, a person who is not vaccinated with IPV, IPV, DTaP, Hep B, and Hib vaccines due to reasons of conscience, poses no extra danger to the public than a person who is. No discrimination is warranted. How often do serious vaccine adverse events happen? It is often stated that vaccination rarely leads to serious adverse events. events. Unfortunately, this statement is not supported by science. A recent study done in Ontario, Canada established that vaccination actually leads to an emergency room visit for one in 168 children following their 12-month vaccination appointment and for one in 730 children following their 18-month vaccination appointment. I think that the emergency room visits of these children are actually higher, but they're, these are the documented cases. And I would think that hospitals are not documenting accurately why children are being brought to the emergency room. Can't back that up with evidence. It's just my gut feeling of how things roll in many Western societies. When the risk of adverse event requiring an ER visit after well baby vaccinations is demonstrably so high, vaccination must remain a choice for pa parents who may understandably be unwilling to assume this immediate risk in order to protect their children from diseases that are generally considered mild or that their children may never be exposed to. Can discrimination against families who oppose vaccines for reasons of conscience prevent further disease outbreaks of communicable viral diseases such as measles? Measles research scientists have for a long time, <clears throat> excuse me, been aware of the measles paradox. And that paradox is, there's an article called Failure to Reach the Goal of Measles Elimination apparent paradox of measles infections in immunized persons. This is a quote from that article. The apparent paradox is that as measles immunization rates rise to high levels in a population, measles becomes a disease of immunized persons. Think about that measles outbreak in Washington. In that uh, anti-vaccination hotspot. 
Further research determined that behind the measles paradox is a fraction of the population called low vaccine responders. Low responders are those who respond poorly to the first dose of the measles vaccine. These individuals then mount a weak immune response to subsequent re-vaccination and quickly return to the pool of susceptibles within two to five years, despite being fully vaccinated. Revaccination cannot correct low responsiveness. In Quebec, Canada, and China, uh, outbreaks of measles still happen, even when vaccination compliance is in the highest bracket, 95 to 97 percent, or even 99 percent. This is because even in high vaccine responders, vaccine-induced antibodies wane over time. Vaccine immunity does not equal lifelong immunity acquired after natural exposure. It has been documented that vaccinated persons who develop breakthrough measles are contagious. In fact, two major measles outbreak in 2011 in Quebec, Canada and New York, New York were re-imported by previously vaccinated individuals. Taken together, these data make it apparent that elimination of vaccine exemptions currently only utilized by a small percentage of families anyway will neither solve the problem of disease resurgence nor prevent re-importation and outbreaks of previously eliminated diseases. Is discrimination against conscientious vaccine objectors the only practical solution? The majority of measles cases in recent U.S. outbreaks, including the recent, um, well, recent for 2015, the Disneyland outbreak, are adults. They're adults and very young babies, whereas in the pre-vaccination era, measles occurred mainly between the ages of 1 and 15. Natural exposure to measles was followed by lifelong immunity from reinfection, whereas vaccine immunity wanes over time, leaving adults unprotected, unprotected by their childhood shots. Measles is more dangerous for infants and for adults than for school-aged children. Despite high chances of exposure in the pre-vaccination era, measles practically never happened in babies much younger than one year of age due to the robust maternal immunity transfer mechanism. The vulnerability of very young babies to measles today is the direct outcome of the prolonged mass vaccination campaign of the past, during which their mothers themselves vaccinated in their childhood were not able to experience measles naturally at a safe school age and established the life and established the lifelong immunity that would also be transferred to their babies and protect them from measles for the first year of life. So we're we're giving these children measles vaccination along with um, rubella and mumps. And we're destroying their natural immunity, which then when they become adults as mothers, they would pass along to their child via breastfeeding and their child would be immune for the first year of life. It's insane. Well, we know why they're doing this. We know that there is a deliberate agenda to destroy people's health because wow you know pharmaceutical agency uh, agents uh, pharmaceutical companies and the medical establishment make a huge profit but they also want to depopulate the planet all right so in summary she writes Due to the properties of modern vaccines, non-vaccinated individuals pose no greater risk of transmission of polio, diphtheria, pertussis, numerous non 
type B, H influenza strains that vaccinated individuals do, non-vaccinated individuals pose virtually no danger of transmission of hepatitis B in a school setting, and tetanus is not transmissible at all. There is a significantly elevated risk of emergency room visits after childhood vaccination appointments, attesting, attesting to the fact that vaccination is not risk-free, is not safe. Outbreaks of measles cannot be entirely prevented, even if we had nearly perfect vaccination compliance. And an effective method of preventing measles and other viral diseases in vaccine ineligible infants and the immune compromised is Im immunoglobulin. You're going to have to research that. Um, is available for those who may be exposed to these diseases. So, in other words, there are other options than vaccinating your child to um, pick up their immune system against these diseases. Taken together, these four facts make it clear that discrimination in a public school setting against children who are not vaccinated for reasons of conscience is completely unwarranted as the vaccine status of conscientious objectors pose no undue risk to the public. So I just posted a video on, on this campaign to push vaccines. They've taken it to a new level. It's since the World Health Organization came out and declared that anti-vaxxers are a global health risk, just like Ebola, just like Ebola and superbugs. And now, you know, you, you've got uh, states declaring public health emergency as measles hit anti-vaccination community. New York Times coming out stating that anyone who questions vaccines, they are the enemy. It's going to only increase. And unfortunately, it's going to be putting a lot of pressure on people who do not have the strength to counter all of these vaccine um, superbugs. They're the superbugs. They're as dangerous as Ebola because these vaccines are killing children. Um, but it's, it's just going to get worse and worse and it's going to get harder and harder to, um, confront these lies, these lies. But when you know what vaccines are doing to these children and you see this push and you see organizations and you see organizations like our, uh, the American Academy of Pediatrics and the, um, American Cancer Society, and so many other, the, the National Association of OBGYNs pushing Gardasil on not just young women, because now they're claiming Gardasil was supposed to prevent cervical cancer, and just like psychiatric medications, how they suddenly, well, uh, yeah, it's uh, take Prozac to um, cure. Not, no cure is available. They just want to put you on medication for life. That's the cure. But suddenly, Prozac is not just for depression, but physical pain. Are you kidding me? You know, these, um, what are they called? The off-label uses of medications and vaccines. Suddenly, Gardasil was no longer for just young children, uh, young girls, but it, Rhode Island makes it mandatory that all young boys in seventh grade get Gardasil. Oh, because suddenly that vaccine is now preventing all types of cancers, even throat cancer and penile cancer and anal cancer. All of this should beg questions in any healthy adult's brain. And those questions that shoot off in their brain should motivate them to do the research to find out the dangers. I do not like kids being destroyed. I do not like kids being destroyed. So please, please um, try to get this information out.
because we are looking at greater and greater discrimination against the unvaccinated crowd. We're looking at, wow, far more degrading, demeaning, with a viciousness uh, towards parents who question vaccines, don't want to vaccinate their children, and you can't. You can't fight this evil alone. You cannot fight this evil alone. I will drop the links below. I just want to mention any parent or grandparent that feels they need support or would like support to share experiences with other parents, grandparents, uh, share information, um, leave me, uh, shoot me an email at truth at gmail.com. I will post that link below, my email address below. Just state in the subject heading of the email, parent or grandparent, and I will connect you with other parents and grandparents who are also interested in, in um, creating a support network. And also anybody interested in getting um, a meeting up with people in your state, either corresponding or talking to or meeting people in your state, you can also shoot me an email, neverlosedrew.gmail.com. Just put in the subject heading your state and I will forward your email address to those in your state. Yeah, it's a hard time, guys. Fighting all of these lies? Huh. Not fun.